Welcome in the second part. Here, I would like to discuss heuristics and biases. First, based on research, we saw that decisions are not always uh, based on informed rational cost-benefit analysis. Also, in addition to loss aversion, people use heuristics, specific mental shortcuts, in order to take snap decisions. Of course, we can ask the question why our decisions are biased, why we are not able always to do a rational cost-benefit analysis. Let's try to answer to this question using this simple example. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? Okay, what's the number? Is it 14? Is it 13? Maybe it's 16 or 17. But did you see the gorilla? The correct answer is 15 passes. Okay, if your calculation deviates from this example, Try to think, yeah, why? What was the cause? This video is from research by Daniel Simons and Christopher Chabri. And then... But did you see the gorilla? Is there anyone who uh, hasn't seen the gorilla? I wonder. Typically, there are at least one or two people. That's uh, really a simple example of how we process information. It's an effect called attentional blindness. This effect indicates that in some cases we allocate so much resources to specific action that we do not see something that is irrelevant. In this case, the gorilla was irrelevant. We did not probably see it because resources, attentional resources, were not allocated. That explains why in some cases we implement different heuristics and biases. People use a large set of heuristics in order to make uh, specific decisions, uh, important or less important. Let's discuss these three heuristics. Availability heuristics, representativeness heuristics, and anchoring heuristic. This heuristic is related to uh, how we perceive frequencies of specific events. If you would think, yeah, how many uh, people die in shark killings? Maybe you would say maybe one in 200. And, uh, it's uh, the value, it's uh, one in three millions. Let's think about how many people die in a bathtub. Is it less? Is it more? Actually, that's the value. It's one in 685,000 cases. Is it a lot? This um, ability heuristic can be defined as the ease with which a particular concept, an idea, construct, can be brought to mind. When a frequent event can be thought of easily, this heuristic leads to overestimation of its likelihood. So, for instance, um, we know there are, there are a lot of 
uh, uh, movies with sharks. So probably if you wouldn't uh, know these numbers, you would think that, yeah, maybe um, uh, that's caused by sharks are more frequent than that uh, that happen in a butt tub. Let's take into account another example, terrorist attacks and shark killings. Which one, in which one, um, more people die? Second type of heuristic is called representativeness. It's related to how people see frequencies and how they apply prototypes into their judgments. Mainly it's related to how we perceived other people. So matching people to prototypes to estimate the likelihood that a person falls into a specific, let's say, social category. Think about Dutch person. Probably Dutch person uh, rides a bike. But think about a uh, person from Denmark, from Copenhagen. What's your first association? This heuristic can cause people to ignore base rates. So if you would compare if you would think, yeah, how many people ride bikes in Netherlands, percentage, uh, and in uh, Denmark, or compare Amsterdam as with uh, people living in Copenhagen, where it's more popular to ride bike. Okay, I think that's uh, clear. We can move to the other example, anchoring. The estimation of number is influences by a previous numbers you have encountered. It means that anchoring is an effect where one estimation primes influences another estimation. It occurs even if the previous number has no connection with the estimated number. One of the basic examples is this one. Let's say that you see a book and the previous price was 20 pounds or 20 euros. That's an anchor. So if the discount is 15 pounds, now the price is 15 pounds, then it's better, it's good. So the difference is five, um, five in this case, five pounds. That's really good. And now let's think about percentage of men in psychology. But before that, think for a few seconds, how many pages has each book? On the left-hand side, maybe uh, 50. On the right-hand side, maybe 700. And now, try to answer to the question, how many men are in psychology? I'm pretty sure that this estimation heavily influenced your estimation. Now, let's think a little bit why those biases uh, or heuristics really exist. They exist because they were implemented in the way how we think, into how our, let's say, brain functions. They are useful when there is a danger approaching. If uh, a lion uh, chases you, probably uh, you will need to apply those characteristics really fast. Of course, that hardly happens nowadays if you do not live uh, uh, on a savanna. When you decide to choose between different products, as uh, you see here, uh, lots of different drinks, then those characteristics they influence your way of making decisions. Those characteristics, in other words, make us prone to systematic biases and errors in making daily life decisions. So, we can say that cognitive biases are a persistent patterns of deviation in our judgment. Biases, like caused by uh, heuristics, affect how people perceive word, mainly other people and themselves. In turn, that impairs our decision making. What is really important is that cognitive biases occur at different stages of information processing, perception, attention, interpretation, but also when you need to retrieve information from our memory and how, of course, we store memories. Now, let's discuss three other important 
facts related to how we make our decisions. The first one is fundamental attribution error, and the second one is confirmation bias. This is well known a fact. It's related to uh, how we behave in a social context. Fundamental attribution error shows a tendency to overemphasize personality based explanations for behaviors that we observe in others. Typically, we see that people are fully responsible for something that they caused. It's not the context. Because we tend to underestimate the influence of context when we judge other people's behavior. The opposite happens when we judge ourselves. Then we overestimate the context and we do not see influence of our traits, dispositions. One of the examples is victim blaming because people they tend to blame victims, not the offenders, for what was uh, done to the victim. Another example of uh, bias is Hinson bias. In this bias, uh, it's called I knew it all along effect. People have this tendency to see past events as uh, being predictable once the outcome is known. Here you see a Titanic that is going underwater. If you would think about what actually was a cause, you may think, yeah, how it was possible that the captain haven't seen the iceberg that he hit and then caused this huge disaster. That's the way how this bias can work. And finally, we can talk about confirmation bias. It's a specific bias because it's related to how we use and how we seek for information. It's a tendency to uh, interpret the information in the way that confirms our beliefs. If an information does not support in what we truly believe, then this information is rejected. As a consequence, this process reduces critical thinking and promotes tunnel vision. It's really typical, um, for instance, in a case where people do a police, in, uh, police investigations. The police, or detective for instance, may have this uh, tendency to collect only information about the crime that confirm his initial hypotheses. Now, let's think about more specific uh, heuristics, consumer-specific heuristics. In the textbook, you can find a few interesting examples of heuristics um, that influence consumer uh, when making decisions. Uh, the first type is related to how we um, search for products, evaluate uh, products, how we make choices, habitual choices, and how we choose products that we are not familiar to. Now, let's focus on evaluation heuristics. One of the important is key criteria. It shows, and or people apply that, uh, in order to um, compare products let's say based on the sugar content or fat content. Also another type of criteria is uh, negative criteria. This is a, uh, a type of heuristic that is implemented and then one or another product can be rejected from the set. And then third one, significant differences. Consumers may tend to seek for significant differences and based on those differences, accept or reject specific products. That's a tendency uh, and a habit that all of us implement from time to time. Now, let's think about examples for all the others uh, heuristics in the consumers. Or maybe there's something that we can add to this list. Do you think that um, it's possible to add a new heuristic? Let's summarize. Of course, people not always behave in the way that it uh, is predicted 
or can be concluded based on utility theory or expected utility theory. Very often people deviate from rationality. They, uh, we, uh, people, make uh, decisions uh, based on limited uh, information, based on specific, sometimes twisted preferences, aversions, we use, we apply heuristics, and also we are prone to specific cognitive biases. As a consequence, our rationality is bounded. Bounded rationality can explain why and when people deviate from rationality and behave in an irrational way. Of course, this term irrationality is quite vague. Nevertheless, I think that still we are every year with new research, new theories, we are more close to understand uh, what rationality is. Thank you for your attention to uh, notice the gorilla. On one hand, this example, it shows how powerful can be our uh, mind. But also, on the other hand, it shows that we are limited to specific activities. We are limited in the way how much resources we can allocate to specific actions. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? The correct answer is 15 passes.